Before I test the hardness of these two hawk talons, I'd like to circle back to the last video I did about these knives, where I demonstrated their sharpness using the fishing line. I whittled a long and four pound of fishing line because as I stated, I am follically challenged. Then I remembered there is a cute blonde living in my house. So I borrowed my wife's hair and here you go. Let's find out what makes this edge so good. I start all my hardness tests with verifying calibration of my Rockwell tester. For that, I use independently NIST certified, serialized and rated 61.99 HRC block from phase two, which is a top notch brand in the world of hardness testing. Top tier tools cost good money and that is, I hope my viewers will join me in thanking monthly members and donors via the super thanks on my channel. They make this content pop. Here you go. Our calibration reading is 62.1 HRC, which is as near perfect as one can hope with this type of tester. The international standard called ASTM E18-15 guides the accuracy of Rockwell testers, and it allows an arrow of plus or minus half point HRC repeatability and plus or minus one point accuracy. These ranges are not mutually exclusive. In other words, if you're having, a, let's say, plus or minus one point accuracy arrow, your repeatability arrow still has to be contained within this window. It cannot exceed and become like 1.2 plus or minus. I hope I'm being clear about it. I'm nerding out. And uh, what you see on the anvil is the blade from the copper handled talon. Just to remind everybody, this is M390 Bowler Micro Melt Steel. Bowler is the German manufacturer that supplies the steel all over the world. Many companies have and are using the steel on their knives, especially when they're looking for extreme corrosion resistance and a really good edge retention. Its edge retention exceeds that of MagnaCut by 20-30% at any hardness. Speaking of hardness, uh, we will be reading these black numbers on the outside of the scale, and our result is coming in at 62.9 HRC. This is uh, the hardest I've seen. M390. How could they possibly? Let's look at the charts that Bowler provides. First one showing heat treatment without the cryogenics. In this regime, M390 can only reach the range between 60 and 62 HRC. Pause of the video and take a look at the chart. The grayed out area represents the maximum corrosion resistance and the hump on the right represents maximum edge retention. There's no way for me to know which path they chose or which region, but I can tell for sure that without cryogenics, they could not have reached anywhere above 62 HRC. The average example is Microtech. When they used M390, they never reached more than 61 and a half hardness. This blade came in at 63 HRC on the second poke. Here's another chart to feast your eyes. In the accompanying description, which you can find on our website, they explain that this hardness level of 62 to 64 HRC can only be reached with cryogenic treatment after all three cycles, meaning after our sanitizing, after temper number one and temper number two. And if I read the description correctly, Bowler recommends two hour cycles for both tempers. I can't tell for sure if uh, Gavin stopped the heat treatment or chose the tempering temperature to keep it in the leftmost region or went all the way up to the maximum edge retention. I'll do my best to reach out to him and ask to comment on this video. Meanwhile, I got 63 on the dot on the third poke for the average of 63 HRC. I hope you are as positively shocked as I am and you didn't forget to hit the like button. There are at least five dozen videos about this knife on YouTube right now. So if you would like my video to stand out, hit this like button and hype the video so that it doesn't go unnoticed. Smelling the blade indicates it is not a lemon mint lip balm. In my excitement, I forgot about my plan to choose the knife that I like the best out of the two and then return the second one. 
Obviously, I cannot return a knife that has been permanently marked with uh, hardness test indentations. So my only hope remains now that one of you may be interested in one of these knives and will let me know in the email. My email address is listed in the channel description. Just click on my avatar and let me know. I know it's a huge commitment monetarily, but but this way you will get a blade with a verified hardness. And as appreciation for bailing me out, I will also throw in one of my Vastid knives that I tested on the channel, either Porcupine or a PSYOP. Uh, and both knives will be accompanied by the address of this video. And that way you will have proof positive of how tough those knives that you now own are to your friends and family. They already know you're crazy, so what do you got to lose? A little bit of an oops here. I think uh, what happened is I allowed one of the studs embedded in the blade to touch the slope on the anvil, and it gave me a bad measurement. So, of course, I am going to reposition the blade and test again. All right, let's focus and get back into our hardness discussion. Since I don't know which range Gavin chose for his tempering temperatures. I can only hope it was somewhere between 780 and 900 Fahrenheit, which would give us the max edge retention. Or did he play it on the safe side and tempered it between, let's say, 230 and 300 Fahrenheit for max toughness? But at 62.9 HRC, I am not complaining either way. Let's do another poke and contemplate what we're seeing here. I don't know what you're thinking. What I am going over in my mind is the fact that this knife appeared at several retailers simultaneously. I got 62.2 HRC on the second poke. And that indicates to me that he made several small batches. In other words, he dedicated a lot of resources to this project versus mixing it in with uh, his other products like the deadlock and the third poke gives me 62.7 hrc so this blade is averaging 62.6 hrc between the three pokes and for the production run i can state that possibly the range is between 62 and a half and 63 and a half rockwell and just to make sure, out of abundance of caution, I would like to recheck the calibration to see if anything moved while I was testing using the same calibration block that you've seen in the beginning of the segment. I am not aware of any other videos currently on YouTube that show the hardness test of these knives, but if somebody did it and you know about it, please let me know in the comments. We are a community and no one knows everything. 62.2 is my second calibration result, confirming the range 62.5 to 63.5. And, and if you wonder how I feel about it, here you go. Let me know how you feel in the comments. At this hardness, M390 will give you really good edge retention. But is it fragile? I am starting uh, with a boinking test here, which is a way for me to determine by sight, feel, and sound whether or not the blade has some kind of deformation toward the tip, or is it symmetrical? If it feels and sounds the same, it's the same. But just in case, let's take a look straight on. I see no deformation whatsoever, and it's perfectly centered in the handle. Let's see if it looks the same when it comes through the test. This is the hardwood block that I use in these types of tests, and I'm hammering the blade about three-eighths of an inch, maybe half an inch deep in between the halves of the clamp. It gives me a solid enough engagement. We're not deliberately trying to break the knife, but we are going to find out how good the steel is at this hardness. And this is something new I'm trying uh, here. I am using my angle finder instead of uh, the usual compass that is mounted behind the blade. I want to bend it 15 degrees. And while I'm struggling a little bit with zeroing it out, eventually I get it right. And now let's just see how far we can take it. 
hope you can read the numbers and uh, they're kind of sideways. There you go. I go actually past 15 degrees before I release the blade. The wood um, is a little bit deformed, so it doesn't return to the exact zero. I think um, it's a little fidgety. I don't know if I will continue to do it this way or just go visually with a compass behind. If you've seen these other tests, let me know which way you prefer. I will get it eventually. I don't want to interrupt uh, the segment so that you know it's a continuous uh, segment, uh, no cheating. Looks like I have to reset the angle finders confused by the weird angle. And eventually I get the zero, thank goodness. So let's do two more times. There's a little latency on the angle finder too, so because of that, I'm going slowly. I'm still shooting past the 15 degrees. And I'm not going to try to reset. I'll just go to 16, 17 degrees there to accommodate for this uh, one degree error. Whew, now I can breathe out. We're done with flexural strength test. And now we're going to subject this knife to the torsional strain by twisting it in both directions three times as hard as I can and that puts a lot of strain on internal hardware. Here you go, you can now see how deep the blade was seated in the block and that it remained straight at least to the naked eye. The mechanism still functions and the blade is still centered. Flips open just like before. The blade stays centered no deviation in functionality of this knife whatsoever. Feels just like when I took it out of the package. Am I forgetting something? Oh yeah, the boinking test. This test is named after Ukrainian metallurgist, Dr. Boinking. I am just kidding. There is no such individual that I know of. And if you're tired of this same joke from video to video, please write a comment and I'll stop doing it. But it cracks me up and that's what's important, right? Okay, it boinks the same way as before the test. I know it's kind of silly. I think in this setup you can clearly see that there is no deformation. Next, I tried to set the knife up in the hype smasher the device you see here that allows me to strike the spine of the blade with a force of 40 pounds. Unfortunately, the design of the knife, the styling of the handle, doesn't allow me to mount it in this clamp. It's just not possible to set it up in such a way that the blade doesn't touch the board, defeating the purpose of the setup. The irony of the situation is it's the safety feature built into the design that's preventing me from testing it for safety. It has, you know, this, I don't know, is it finger choil? It's not really on the blade, but it's a part of the blade. So we're going to call it a finger uh, cutout. When you're holding the knife, either in a hammer grip, in any kind of working grip, if you, uh, you know, bearing down thusly, this part of the knife is always pinched. Even in the reverse grip, it's firmly behind your fingers. So even if the knife unlocked, let me unlock it and show you. Even if the knife unlocked, the blade would not go farther than your index finger. It would pinch your index finger, but will not drop completely. So after trying in vain to set the knife up for the experiment, I resorted to this silly method of demonstration. I'm hitting it pretty hard on a hard surface, it's not unlocking, and uh, I am satisfied that my fingers are safe if and when I choose to use this knife in some kind of hard application. I feel like I've been defeated by this knife twice, first when I couldn't set it up in the hype smasher, and now that it won't unlock no matter how hard I try. I'm going to go ahead and say something silly. As I was working on the disassembly and reassembly video, 
right in the middle of it, I got into explaining how all the pieces uh, interact. This knife is very simply built, but it's also a very sophisticated design. In fact, I, if I had to sort of describe it in a poetic way, I would call it Armorer's Spirit Incarnate. That's what that is. And I couldn't shake the feeling that I'm actually working on something similar to 1911 or Makarov. That's how sophisticated yet simple is the design. Even if you don't own this knife or not planning on owning this knife, but are familiar with 1911s and Makarovs, would you please watch the disassembly video and let me know if you're getting the same kind of vibe? That would really help me understand my uh, viewers better and potentially consider doing some videos with other types of weaponry. Please let me know.